Hi, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. And thank you for the invitation to the 2021 CSAI conference. This is Shadi Ahmed, and my talk is about the use of a nudging based hybrid analysis and the modeling framework for the real time wake vortex prediction with, uh, with the end goal of building these twins for airports. This is a slide I usually use in most of my presentations. I am interested in uh, emerging digital twin application, and I prefer to define digital twin as simply a virtual representation or replica of any given system in such a way that it captures its main characteristics and duplicates its, its behavior. So you can think of it as just like a computer program that simulates your actual system. So in the past, this computer program was mainly used before you build your physical system. So you use your computer program during an offline stage to test different parameters and operating condition or different scenarios. Then you try to optimize your design and finally build your system. But once the system is ready to go, you don't, you don't really uh, use uh, this computer program anymore for the same system, or at least you don't use it continuously. So since this computer program was mainly used during an offline stage, we had the time and luxury to run high fidelity simulation and wait for days or even weeks before we get a solution. However, in the digital twin concept nowadays, the physical system and the computer program or digital twin have to run together in parallel. And more importantly, your system will provide some real time observations or measurements and your digital tone has to process these data and test a lot of what if situation or scenarios. And based on these assessments, it has to return some informed decision, which can be, be vital for something like risk management or control. And of course, it is clear that for this framework to be valuable, the digital tone has to be able to run many simulations and return a decision in real time or near real time. And of course, traditional high fidelity simulation become off the table for this scenario. So there is an urging need for computational light simulation, and of course, with acceptable accuracy. And this can be achieved by different approaches. But in this in this talk, I, we are interested in reduced order modeling. So this is a quick overview of moving from full order models or FOM to reduced order models or ROM. Here we assume that the full order model is our form, or our form, form is a navier stokes equation or simply the for state transport equation. So if we want to solve this equation, we first define our mesh and do some discretization. And basically we solve or enforce this equation at each grid point or each cell and at every time step. And this can give high fidelity results, but very expensive, of course. Instead, in reduced order modeling, we are interested in system where we can approximate our solution, our solution field as a superposition of the contributions of a few basis functions or modes. And these basis functions usually represent or capture the underlying patterns or coherent structure in our flow. Then we substitute this approximation into the governing equations and apply something like Galilean projection to get our Galilean reduced order model or what we call GROM. So here, as you see, we converted the problem from solving for the flow field variable at each grid point to solving a system of ordinary differential equations for, to predict the weights of these basis functions or what we call the modal coefficients. So here we solve just for our coefficients. So far so good. Now the thing is that for most flow flow applications, the cost of solving this GROM becomes of order of R cube which means that we need to maintain or keep this R as, as small as possible. And actually this works pretty well for some systems, but for other systems, especially those dominated by convictions or advection mechani advictive mechanism, with strong linearity, we find that this system exhibit a low decay in, in what we call the cosmograph inwards, which is just a fancy, a fancy phase that means that a low dimensional linear subspace like the one that we are using now in this study becomes insufficient to capture the main dynamics of your system. So this eventually leads to some inaccurate and even unstable results. Ideas like closure modeling or domain partitioning and nonlinear manifold have been explored to mitigate this issue. 
But anyway, people has people accept that we need to interfere here and add some correction to the gallery in Rome. If we go back and recall our motivation, we find that there is a rich stream of data that we can utilize to do this correction. And this data stream are more available and rich nowadays than any time before. One way to benefit from this is to just rely on data and to combine them with some machine learning tools like neural networks to learn our underlying dynamics without bothering ourselves with the governing equation or doing any galaxy projection. So this leads to what we call data-driven or purely data-driven or non-intrusive models. For example, if we know that the Galactic projection, or uh, Galactic ROM be prediction become, might become inaccurate. So we can train a neural network to do this prediction or map to map the current values of the model coefficient to their, to their future values. This Actually, this approach has been successful in many scenarios, and you can refer to this paper here for more discussions. But recently, like people started to question whether we can, in reality, rely on these end-to-end data-driven frameworks. And issues like generalizability and interpretability are still unsolved. So we believe, and actually not only our team, but everyone believes that it is better to do or have some hybrid models, which combines data-driven tools with physics-based foundation or models. So one way to do this is through data assimilation, which is an elegant approach or a family of approaches that aim at combining or fusing available dynamical models with measurement data to provide some better predictions. And the good thing about data assimilation is that it inherently assumes that the model is imperfect or insufficient, and the data are noisy. So we believe it is a perfect candidate for hybrid models. In particular, the framework that we are considering here is the nudging method. So if we de denote our GROM equation in a compact form as AN plus one equal to M of AN, which where M is a one time step mapping from the current AN to the feature AN plus one, so the nudging method works by simply adding a nudging or a correction term here that penalizes the, di the discrepancy between your prediction and the actual measurements here. And G is called the gain or nudging matrix. So as you see, it is a very simple approach, but usually the estimation of this gain or nudging matrix is not as simple. And also at the end, it is just a linear correction term. In this study, or the present study, we relax this assumption and assume that we have a nonlinear function G that takes measurements and prior forecasts from Galactic Rome and provides this correction as a whole. So we have background information or prior forecasts from Galactic Rome here, but we need we know that we need to add some correction or nudging to derive this prior forecast towards the true values. So at this stage, we put a data-driven tool or we in interfere with a data-driven tool, which here we use a long short-term memory neural network or LSTM to learn the mapping, from, the mapping G from the measurements Z and the prior forecast A to, co to, co to compute or predict the correction term C. So here, our core model is a physics-based model and we only augment or correct its prediction using a data-driven tool in a data assimilation framework. Our test case is the weak, <clears throat> is the weak vortex transport problem in a 2D scenario where we initialize our flow with a two counter-rotating Gaussian vortices. We assume a 2D domain of 2 pi by 2 pi with periodic boundary conditions and the Reynolds number of 10,000. And for the full order, sim full order model simulation, we use a 512 by 512 uh, Cartesian grid. And details can be found in this paper. We rely on twin experiment framework to test the, our method. In particular, we assume that we don't know the true initial condition, but we have some perturbed version of it with some Gaussian noise with zero mean and the standard deviation of sigma b. 
And also we assume that the measurements are contaminated with some Gaussian noise, white Gaussian noise with zero, uh, zero mean and standard division of sigma m. In our base case, we use six modes. So instead of solving 512 squared system of equation, we solve only six equations. We use a standard deviation of one for both the initial condition perturbation and the measurement noise. We place eight sensors in each direction or like one sensor every 64 grid points. And we collect measurement data every 10 time steps. And since we are dealing with a twin experiment situation, we run an ensemble of 30, uh, 30 realizations with different seed numbers for the random noise and perturbation. And we compute the mean, the mean value and the standard division. So here the line denotes the mean and the shaded band represents the standard deviation of the ensemble prediction. So we can see here that the LSTMN or LSTM nudging framework is able to recover the true projection values compared to the background. So the background here means that using just only Galerick and Rome equation. For visualization, this is the reconstructed vorticity field at the final time, which is here as final time is 30. Again, we can see that LSTMN is much more accurate compared to Gallic and Rome. For quantitative assessments, we also plot the root mean squares, <clears throat> root mean squares error for the predicted vorticity field at different times. So here, we also compare, again, compare it against linear nudging framework and the 3D VAR, which is a classical technique in data simulation. Again, the solid line represents like the average values from an ensemble of 30 different runs with different seed numbers. And the shaded area defines the standard deviation bounds. Then we test the framework with different noise level. So first we change the amount of initial condition perturbation with sigma b two and five, sigma b equal to five. And do we use we use the same <clears throat> you use the same LSTM and uh, LSTM nudging trained with sigma b equal to one. We see that the <clears throat> the framework is quite robust to this perturbation and is still capable to provide sufficient correction. Here we change the level of measurements noise with sigma m equal to two, three, and four. And we find that the LSTM nudging is quite more sensitive to measurement noise than initial condition perturbation, but still able to give good results. Finally, we explore the effects of measurement sparsity. First, we consider the spatial sparsity. Here we use more dense data and the blaze sensor every 32 grid points. And these two cases are like a more sparse or less dense data with every 128 and 256. And in all cases, we are getting good performance. Here we test the effect of temporal sparsity. So in the base case, we were collecting data every 10 time steps. Here we test if we use more frequent data every five time steps. And in these two cases, we use less frequent data, like every 20 and every 30, 20, uh, 30 time steps. And we find that the, the performance is quite robust. <clears throat> to wrap up, we envision that reduced order models can provide a key enabler for digital twin applications. On one extreme standard physics based the Gallic and Rome might suffer from inaccuracies or instabilities. On the other extreme, purely data-driven models of like generalizability and interpretability. We propose hybrid ROM in a data, data simulation framework to combine, to combine imperfect model and perturbed initial condition with noisy measurements to improve our predictions. And the here results showcase the promise of the LSTM nudging framework and its robustness to different level of noise and sparsity. Thank you for tuning in, and now I would be happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you.